right, folks, so welcome back to another video. Finally doing another GTI installment because the weather is actually dry for once. As you remember, we went stage two or stage two light with a few basic bolt-ons. We won the stock intercool and that did hold us back in terms of the overall power figures. And we did also have an issue with the rear caliper sticking on the dyno. So yeah, the plan is to fix all of that and hopefully return to the dyno. I'm not too sure if I can get it in this video, but yeah, I'll show you all the parts I've got. We'll make a start. Right, so in this box, we've got an intercooler from the guys at Airtech Motorsport. I mean, you never could have guessed really. It's a pretty uh, incognito box. Could never really go wrong with their products. I ran one of their intercoolers on my old Edition 30. That was running around 420 horsepower with a hybrid turbo. Performed flawlessly. Now I know with the MQB platform, there's a ton of options. But yeah, I thought I'd stick to what I know. Now I have got a few more products back here. So we've got a uh, new rear caliper. Well, I've got two, but I'll show you one because it's the same on both sides. Now this is from a GTI Performance. As you know, my GTI is the uh, Bargo spec normal GTI. So it's got the solid 300 millimeter rear discs. The main difference is the fact that you get vented rear discs. So this is a 310 millimeter disc, not a huge difference. But yeah, I've gone for these M-Tech ones, got them off eBay. I wanted it to essentially match the Club Sport S ones up on the front. So the drilling is in the same kind of arrangement. I think we'll make a start on the brakes first and then we'll move on to the intercooler. Before we do that though, I just need to get the car lifted up safely on the quick jacks. Now, whilst we're on the topic of safety, I do want to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor, Surfshark. Now, if you're not familiar with Surfshark, it's a VPN service, VPN standing for Virtual Private Network. It's designed to keep your identity safe online by encrypting all the information between your device and the internet. This can help keep your personal data safe against big companies or hackers. It comes in very handy in public places like service stations, which usually have free Wi-Fi. Imagine going on a road trip, picking up some car parts, stopping over for a coffee and then getting hacked it's not ideal is it folks now in addition to all these safety benefits the other cool thing about surfshark vpn is it allows you to change your virtual location when you're browsing online now there are multiple uses for this but one of the more cooler ones is the fact that you can watch movies on netflix from other countries say for example you want to watch the dark knight with a vpn disabled in uk setting let's say it's not available whereas if i go and open surfshark select canada refresh the page type in batman so you can see why the selection comes up and there we have it, the Dark Knight's ready to view. So yeah, guys, make sure you check out Surfshark. I've put a link down below in the description. If you head over there and use my discount code, which is TR Hamza, you'll save a massive 83% off. You also get another three months free on top of that. They offer a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So there really is no risk to trying it out. But yeah, big thanks to Surfshark again for sponsoring today's video. Let's finally get this GTI sorted. Right guys, so here we have it, our main culprit, the driver's side rear caliper. You do need to turn the handbrake off before you start the job, of course. And there are two main bits you're going to need. So one is an M14 triple square, and the other one is a 7mm Allen head or hex bit, whatever you want to call it. Now the very first thing you want to do is remove these caps which cover the caliper pins. This is essentially where the 7mm Allen head is going to come into play. There's two of them, there's one at the top and one at the bottom. <sighs> there we go. Scratch my hands in the process, got the driver on the end. And there we have it, the first caliper pin out. That's what it looks like if you needed to know. Right, so now that the pins have been taken out, we can separate two parts of the caliper. It is going to be a bit trickier because you've got this pin here as well, which holds it all together. I've returned with gloves because I don't need any more injuries. Ah. Yeah, I think I should just not speak about injuries. I think that's when I get them. Now this thing still does have the brake line attached so you can't just let it go, try and balance it on something. But we've also got an extra connection, I'm presuming for this handbrake motor here, so... Now the next job is to remove this caliper bracket which is bolted directly onto the hub. It's got those two M14 triple squares that I mentioned earlier. It might be a bit tricky to see here, but the top one is that right there. And the bottom one is... Yeah, it's right below the wheel speed sensor, so that there. Now I've got it loosened with a breaker bar. I've got a bit of an issue. These Halfords Advanced drivers, they're quite thick, so you can't really get much space. So unfortunately, the only one I've got in my possession that's a bit thinner is a torque wrench. So I do apologize, but I'm going to have to loosen it somewhere. I'm not going to use it for the full job. Yeah, that's a pretty weird way of doing it. I mean, I've got a flexi head on it and... There we have it, lads. Bottom one should be a, a lot easier. And next, to remove the disc, we need a T30 bit. So let me see if it undoes by hand. Yeah, look at that. I'm not gonna lie, brake fluid's one of my least favorite car liquids, I'll be honest. Freed caliper. 
Okay, so a little side-by-side -side comparison now that those have been taken off. So if you look at the part number, it's 5Q06154060BK. And on this one, yeah, the number looks the same, but the letters after it are different. So it's DM instead of BK. I mean, when you glance at it like that, you would be able to tell the difference. But if you look at the top here, this one is a lot flatter in design, whereas this has these thicker ridges. The pads that came with the new caliper are also slightly different. They've got these cuts on them. And yeah, I've got these... HEL braided lines to go with it. So give this a thorough cleaning. You don't want to have any debris stuck on the edges here when you put the new disc on. A bit more brake cleaner. Now the purpose of this coating is that once obviously you start driving, this is going to go silver, the outer bit, once the pad gets onto it. But this centre bit will stay black so it doesn't go all rusty. First thing, put the bracket back on with these triple square bolts. Now because this is a OEM part and it's not a huge upgrade, it pretty much just goes on exactly how the other one came off. So this side's all done now, got the brake line all tightened up. Little HEL logo there as well, just tops it off. Nice and fresh, as you can see the disc moves freely now, unlike before. Right, so sometime later I've got the other side done now as well, it's all matching and fresh and everything else you could probably say about it. Next we're going to bleed the system, I did show this in a bit more detail in the other video where we did the front brakes, quickly I'll recap on that. Club Sport S discs new calipers, um, DS2500 pads and the same lines. So if you want to see in a bit more detail, you can always check that video out. I'm just going to quickly get this done before we run out of daylight because it is uh, quite weird here this time of the year. Right, so it's the next day. The brakes have all been bled. Now that we're done messing with brake fluid, we can move on to the intercooler install. Now on a GTI, you have to literally take the full front end off. So yeah, we're in for a bit of a treat. Okay, so you've seen me take a bumper off in the previous videos anyway, but yeah, we're going to have to do a few extra steps today, like taking the headlights out. The front panel itself is going to completely come out and the intercooler is just wedged in between, just like a Mark V. Forgot how heavy this thing is with the splitter. Now we are going to keep this old condenser for now. Couldn't get a booking in time to drain the AC system because you can't exactly just let air come fluid just out into here basically it's kind of illegal so right so at this point my neighbors decided to do some drilling so i thought i'd continue with the job and do a voiceover afterwards basically there's a bunch of t30s holding this bracket on above the headlight it also has the top of the washer bottle attached to it so once you remove them it should all come out as one piece next we move on to the headlight this has got a few t30s as well one of them is sandwiched at the front and there's going to be one at the top as well which is also down below and then there's one directly on the side as well which should be quite clear to see once you've removed them the headlight should be free to come out. Obviously, don't forget to remove the electrical connector at the back. Now, the whole purpose of removing the headlights is to get access to these 16 millimeter bolts you see, which hold the front panel on. Light work. Now, when it comes to removing the bracket above the headlight on the other side, the bonnet cable is attached to it. So make sure you do this carefully. It should just pry out quite easily. You remove the plastic cap. And then, yeah, we've essentially got the front panel bolts to undo. Finally. Now with the front panel removed, we've got full access to the rad pack. First, we want to get the aircon condenser out the way. So you're essentially going to pry upwards. It's a bit fiddly. It's probably easier to use two screwdrivers or in the case of my one, I'm using one flathead and one Torx bit on an extension, but here we are. Once that's out the way, you'll be able to see the intercooler. Yeah, completely standard and a ton of wildlife in it. So yeah, we're gonna have to disrupt a few homes today. Okay, so attacking these here, they are a bit of a nightmare. What I did was put it on the top, twist it kind of like that, push it through. So you gotta push upwards on the lower one, downwards on that one. So then it kind of just clips backwards. Pry it back here. There you go. Everything's unplugged. This thing's loose now as well. I've got a jack stand with a little block holding up the rest of the radiator. Easy. All right, that's not what I wanted to happen. Right, so I've got the air tech out of the box, do a little side-by-side -side comparison with the OEM one. Yeah, it's pretty noticeable how different they both are. This one's obviously very flimsy and full of wildlife. It's got plastic end tanks. The air tech's just a really high quality product. Everything from the logo stamped on the top, just the general feel of it when you unbox the thing and you get fresh boost pipes, new clamps. Now we'll put a link to the air tech website in the description below if you'd like to know more about it or potentially buy one. What we're gonna do now is fit the thing. Yeah, that radiator is very mucky, man. I think it's good, be a good shot to give that a clean first. I haven't got any compressed air back here, so I'm gonna use a leaf blower. Yeah. 
and new boost pipe straight on. Yeah, I won't tighten it just yet in case we need to adjust it. It's interesting, the outlet is actually larger on this side as opposed to the other pipe, which is the same on both ends. Okay, time to get the air tech in. So I should use these same clips here, like the OEM and cooler, and the radiator should slot in as well, just like the other one, sort of hanging on at the minute. Okay, that's in. <coughs> That's in. So this is slotted in perfectly fine. It's holding, but as you can see, there's a little hole on top. So in the box with the AirTech, you get these grub screws. So you need a one millimeter Allen. It basically goes on the top there and it just gives you a bit of extra peace of mind. Right, folks, I know it doesn't look it, but the intercooler is pretty much mounted up now. The next stage to put this aircon rad back on, get it all lined up with the boost pipes and essentially put the front end on. It's a bit of a shame that we have to cover it up, but it's just the nature of the design on these cars. The intercooler is always sandwiched in the middle. But yeah, in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is get this all back together, make sure it's all working as well. And yeah, I'll catch up with you guys on the other end. Right guys, here we are a few days later. Everything's been put back together. The car is running as you can see, so the install went okay. The air tech obviously was quite involved in. Now, I have been driving the car around to try and get rid of some of this coating, because I'll be honest, I did have to bleed the brakes about three times, because I kept thinking there wasn't any pedal feel. I feel like I need to do it through VCDS as well at some point, but once that coating wore off, definitely a lot better. Now, my initial plan with this video was just to show the hardware being installed, because I wasn't too sure if I could get a dyno slot in time. But yeah, we managed to get one at short notice at MRC Tuning. I'll run those clips now. You can see exactly what all of this stuff got us in terms of BHP. Right, so we're back for round two. Time to head over to the dyno. Plan is first, we're just going to run the car as it is with the new hardware. Right, Doug, so we're back with a, a GTI without a sticky rear caliper, at least, I suppose, and an intercooler. And that's the previous run, was it? Yeah, that's the previous run. No changes to software. Mm -hmm. And now we're up at 327 yeah. we're and 494 new meters. So the plan for today is that we're going to add map switcher, aren't we? Map switching. So we'll do a, a stock map, a stage two map for this hardware. And then we'll do an octane booster one as well, just yeah. to see what it will do yeah. with better fuel. Right, so the next process is to get the ECU out of the car to add all the map switching functions and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to seeing what this thing drives like afterwards because before we've even changed the map on the road, it's significantly quicker. I am considering to take the overrun off today as well. I know it makes a good old racket, but me personally, I like having a bit more of a subtle car. So I'm gonna try and find a way to make this exhaust system quiet as well, maybe a bigger res. Right, so the ECU's back in, the map switch has been loaded on. We're just gonna do a few test runs just to See what it does, and we'll build up from there. Right, so we've done a few test runs with the map switcher on. So this is stage two, just on 99 run, and above five and a half, the actuator maxes out. So I'm just going to after five and a half, just going to run a little bit less for the actuator still controls boost. Oh, okay, so, so there's probably, probably not much more than this. And the low boost map is 287.8 bar, so we'll just drop down that, that down just a little bit more just to be closer to start. Right, so 334 is where we're at. It would have been nice to have 340, but we're going to dial it back a bit. Rather, I get home in one piece. Okay, so this is with, yeah, so the, the peak number's the same was controlled, but up here is just slackened off a bit, is what you're saying. It's a little bit less up here, and mm. now the actuator's still controlling boost, even though it's close to maxing out, it's not maxed out. Yeah, so, and the next plan, what are we going to be putting octane booster octane in? Octane booster in, and we'll run more timing, yeah. and see what that does. It says it adds six run. Okay. So, it, I, I would say you put half a, it's meant to be half a bottle into a full tank, but I put a full bottle in when we're... Mm -hmm. Trying to get it to mix quicker just now. Yeah. Um, usually, um, it takes up to about 102 ron, 103 ron, mm -hmm. or 99 up to that. You usually run an extra four or five degrees timing, and if there's headroom, you would run a little bit more boost, but we're pretty much maxed out. So 
the final numbers then. So octane booster 355. Yep, 355. All right. It's a big it's cooled, maxed out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big jump on Octane Boost, isn't it? 20 p 20 yeah. yeah. High compression engine. Yeah. GTI. So the fuel should make a bigger difference than yeah. a lower compression engine. So yeah. Nice 542 new mirrors as well. See that's the jump there from fitting the new hardware. So 316 to 334. Obviously on that day it was quite hot, I do remember, but look at the torque difference. So we're into the 500 new mirror range. Some cars do do a little bit more, but a 2013 car, the turbo's maxed out, we can't, you can't force it to do more, so... Yeah, of course, it's plenty for what it is. 130k on that turbo over there, so... It's all good. So we've got the day logging software up because we just want to show how the turbo was maxed out on the earlier runs and then how we dialed it back. Yeah, so if you look here, this is the actuator percentage, and the lower the percentage, the harder it's driving the, the turbo. And where it flat lines here, this is where the actuator is hard up against the end stop and running the turbo mm -hmm. flat out in theory to infinity <laughs> speed. Yeah, so at this point we don't actually know, but it's just doing what it wants it's to do at that point. Flat, flat out, so mm -hmm. on the later runs we just brought it back ever so slightly so you can see here it's not flat lined. Yeah. It's just above the, the mm. flat out and now it controls. Yeah, what the turbo's doing. We've also deleted the over and as well. Well, I asked for the over to be yeah, deleted. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. no more flames. Yeah, because I, I thought we'd have a bit of fun in the previous video just to get a few flames on the dyno. But realistically, driving around sounding like an AK-47 is an idea. But as mentioned, there is also map switching on the car now as well. So this shows that it's in map three. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so it basically uses the RPMs. Yep, like the and then RS3. you can cycle around to map four, which is your immobilizer mode. Mm -hmm. Cycle to map one, which is your low boost or close to stock map. Yep. Map two is your 99 map. Back to map three. Yeah. Map four. And on map four. Oh, it's an immobilizer. The car will never start. Okay, yeah. I suppose next year, now that we're running the IS20 Max, I suppose we need to uh, move up a turbo. I'll let the uh, viewers have a guess of what that can be. Overall, in terms of the performance of the air tech, would you say. Good in its cooler? Yeah, it's, it's doing its job. Yeah. It's really good. So 18 degrees C in the dyno room and then 27 was the IAT. Max temperature is 27 degrees C, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Job. Significantly lower than before. Right guys, so we'll end the video here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm definitely pleased with the results. 334 PS on 99 run. And then I believe it's 355 on Octane Booster. So strong numbers. Subscribe for a lot more content to come. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.